Welcome to another video demonstration in Weiss Software's Visual Cam Stencil Design Series. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to manually identify the footprints in a design by selecting the part pins and adding them to the footprint library. When this command is used, all matching occurrences of the footprints you select will be found automatically. Once all footprints have been identified, I will define the paste shapes for each footprint before then going on to generate a stencil for the design. We recommend that as you work with VisualCam, you create a master footprint library with paste shapes assigned that may be used with all designs that you work with. Over time, this library will grow to include most parts that you encounter, and new parts can be added to the library whenever they are found. ID by selecting part pins is typically used to identify any remaining footprints left after you ID by library and or ID by package definitions. These footprints are then saved to your master library for future use. So let's get started. Before we begin though, there are some things that must be completed before running the identify parts command. First, for this particular demonstration, I will need a design with a top and or bottom layer or original paste layer, and this must be open in the workspace or it must be imported. Second, before you begin any processing, Go to the user menu and run the macro called Stencil Layer Prep on your original top and or bottom layers. This macro automates three processes on the layer you specify to prepare your data for optimal processing and identification. These are Drawn Pad Conversion, Stacked Pads Removal, and Custom Apertures to Intrinsic Apertures Conversion. I also want to see the part outlines on the design as I identify them so I go to the View menu and select the Parts command. Or I can click on the View Parts button to activate this mode. Now that I am ready to identify the footprints, I start by going to the Stencils menu and selecting the Identify Parts Select Footprint command. You can also access this command using the ID Parts Select Part Pins button located on the Stencil toolbar. When the Part Identification Select Footprint dialog box opens, the first thing you'll notice is that Visual Cam has chosen the top layers automatically. This is because the top layer in my design was assigned prior to running the command. If the layer types are not set up, use the drop down menu to choose a layer to use as the original layer. If no bottom or silkscreen layer types exist in the design, the field will list none. The modified layers are where the paste data will be generated. You can either select a layer to which you want this data to be generated, or leave it set to None, and Visual Cam will automatically select the next available empty layer when generating the paste data. Choose the Run 2-Pin Part Orientation Check option if you have a design with ambiguous 2-Pin Part Orientation. Visual Cam will prompt you to approve the orientation of pads that could match either vertically or horizontally. If you have a silkscreen layer with well-defined part outlines, choose the Use Silkscreen Layers to Verify 2-Pin Part Orientation option, and the system will use that data to determine the component orientation. Note that this option only becomes available when you first choose the Run 2-Pin Part Orientation Check option. Next, the tolerance is set to account for small variances between part instances and for misalignment in a row of pins during the pin identification process. In this case, I am using 0 .0002 as the tolerance. The Report Unidentified Pads option is used to run the Unidentified Pad check after the identification process is complete. You can either run this during the identification process, or it can be run separately after you have identified all footprints. Find Additional Part Instances on, when selected, tells the system to find any other instances of the part footprint you are about to define. Select whether you want the system to look on the top layer, bottom layer, or both. If you do not select this option, the footprint will be added to the library, but additional part instances that match that footprint will not be identified. After choosing all of my options, I click on the OK button to run the command. When the dialog box disappears, you will see a prompt in the status bar at the bottom left of your window telling you to select pin 1. When identifying footprints manually, it's best to start with the parts with the most pins and work your way towards those with the least. So you can clearly see the pins, zoom in on a part by placing the cursor over it and pressing the plus key on the keyboard several times. 
To select all the pins at once, especially on parts containing many pins, change the Select Filter mode to Window. You will notice that the status bar prompt has changed to Enter First Point, press End or Insert when all pins are selected. Drag a window around a set of pads that make up a footprint and left click to select all the pins. Once all the pins have been selected, press the End key on your keyboard to add that footprint to your library. If the control to find additional part instances is active, a message box will appear letting you know how many additional instances of that particular footprint were found. Click on the OK button to continue. Press the minus key to zoom out so you can see which parts still need to be identified and zoom back in. Repeat the steps. Drag a window, left click to select the pins, and press the end key. Note that if you are working with a top or bottom copper layer that has traces on it, the best way to identify the footprint is with the Select filter in Item mode rather than Window mode. The prompt in the status bar will change back to Select Pin 1. Zoom in as close as you can to see the pins. Then left click on the first pin. In the status bar you will then see a second prompt to select the furthest pin from pin number 1. Of course, in a part with only two pins this is easy. In the status bar, you will see a third prompt to select or deselect pins, press End or Insert when all pins selected. Once all the pins have been selected, press the End key on your keyboard. But what if you have a part that has many pins? The first pin can be the top or bottom left pin, or the top or bottom right pin. If the Choose Selection dialog box opens, choose the correct flash. You'll know because the pin will be highlighted in the main window, and then click on the OK button. The furthest pin from pin 1 is usually the pin diagonally across from it. Once you click on the pin, all the other pins in the part will be selected automatically. If you happen to miss a few pins, you can select them now individually by clicking once on each one. To deselect pins, click on the pin or press the Escape key on your keyboard once for each pin selected. When all pins have been selected, press the N key on your keyboard or use the Insert key if you would like to add a reference designator prefix, for example, U. VisualCam will find all other parts that match the one you just identified and let you know how many were found. Press the OK button to continue. If at any time during the process you realize you misidentified a part, for example without selecting all the pins, you can always delete the new footprint and re-identify it. Here, I'm going to right click on a part and choose the Open Footprint Shape Library option. The dialog box will open with the footprint already selected from the list. To remove the footprint from the library, right click on the footprint in the list and choose Delete Footprint. Visual Cam will warn you that the footprint is currently being used and that all uses will be deleted. To go through with the deletion, click on the Yes button in the Confirm message box. Back in the Footprint Library dialog box, click on the OK button to continue. Note that once you click on the OK button, it saves the library and the change cannot be undone. Cancel will not save the library and the part will not be deleted from the library. Here you will see that the parts that use that particular footprint now have to be re-identified. The other option to remove a footprint from the library is to delete it using the navigator. To do this, right-click on Parts and choose the Sort By Footprint option in the menu. Right-click on the footprint you want to remove from the library and choose the Delete Footprint option. Again, you will be asked to confirm that you actually want to delete the footprint and all parts using it. Note that if you only need to change one part and keep the existing footprint in the library, another option is to expand the tree in the navigator to see all instances of a footprint. Right-click on the part you want to delete and choose the Delete option from the menu. Again, you will be asked to confirm the deletion. Another option is to right-click on the part in the main screen and delete it from there. If the Choose Selection dialog box opens, select the correct part instance and then click on the OK button before selecting the Delete option from the menu. Confirm the deletion by clicking on the Yes button. Once my problem parts or footprints have been deleted, I can go back and manually identify the parts again, making sure all the pins are selected before continuing. Continue the process of selecting and identifying until all parts in the design have been identified. To save time, I'm going to speed up this process.
If you want to end the process at any time, press the Escape key on your keyboard. Once you have finished identifying your footprints, press the Escape key. At the end of the process, if you selected the Report Unidentified Pads option, the system will let you know how many non-part pads were found as well. Click on the OK button to continue. To view these pads, go to the Navigator Error folder and open Paste Non-Part Pads by clicking on the plus sign to expand the list. When you click on an individual error, it will be highlighted in the main screen. Use the ID by Select command again to identify any missing parts. If you chose not to report the unidentified pads during the identification process, you can run the check after you are done. Go to the Analysis menu and choose Find Non-Part Pads. You can also access this command using the Find Non-Part Pads button located on the toolbar. Once all parts are identified, it is now time to define the paste shapes for each footprint added to the library. I start by going to the Stencils menu and selecting the Setup and Assign Shapes command. You can also access this command using the Setup Assign Stencil Shapes button located on the toolbar. Here, I'm going to create a new shape set and quickly go through the process of assigning a shape to the first footprint. For detailed information about assigning shapes and to learn the function of each control in the Stencil Footprint Shape Library, please refer to the video demonstration in this series describing how to use the Stencil Footprint Shape Library dialog box. Once you are finished defining your shapes, you can always return later to change any of the settings. Be warned, though, that changing any settings of a shape changes the shape definition and will apply to all uses of that shape in the currently loaded footprint library. So it is important when you have used the current shape on a footprint that you do not make any modifications to the settings unless you want all parts to have this new shape. Note that these changes will not affect paste layer data that has already been created after the Generate Stencil process has been completed. The changes will only apply if the paste data is regenerated. If you want to preserve your shape but make a similar one with a small modification, have your shape name selected and then click on the shape name pulldown and select New. All settings that were assigned to the shape will be copied to the new shape and you can make your setting changes. When you have finished defining all the shapes, click on the OK button to exit the dialog box and save those changes. Now that shapes have been assigned to the footprints I identified, I am ready to generate the stencil. To generate the stencil, I go to the Stencils menu and choose the Generate command. This command can also be accessed using the Generate Paste Layer button on the toolbar. In the Stencil Generation dialog box, Visual Cam defaults to the current shape set. Any shape sets included in the design may be selected by dropping down the list and choosing another one. Select the layer or layers for which paste is to be generated. In this design, I only have a top layer, so that is the only one selected and active. When the No Shape is defined, use Unmodified Shape option is checked. All footprint pins that do not have a shape assigned in the current paste shape set use the original part pin as the paste shape. Effectively, this is the same as assigning a paste shape of original with no modifications to the pin. When the Update Existing Paste Layer Data option is checked and there is data on the paste layer at the location of a part, the existing data is deleted and the new paste shape is added. If it is not checked, the existing data will remain and new data will not be generated. Using the Reference Layer area of the dialog box is optional. The reference layer would be used if you make a copy of the original data onto a new layer prior to starting up the stencil generation. The reference layer allows you to easily see when all paste data has been generated by removing the data from the reference layer until the layer is empty. This is commonly used when you have a large design or you are working from a copper layer that has traces, and this method allows for quick visual verification that you have generated paste shapes for all pads. Reference layers should be layer type Other. If you do use the Delete Reference Pads During Generation option, at least one reference layer must be specified. Pads on the reference layer at the location of a pin for which paste data is generated will be deleted. When you have chosen all your options, click on the OK button to run the command. Once VisualCam is finished generating the paste layer, I want to visually verify that the paste shapes are correct and complete. 
To do this, make sure the pads on the new paste layer are of a contrasting color to those on the original layers by using the colors bar and making changes if necessary. With both the original and paste layers on, you can either use the View Overlay command or in the colors bar double click on the paste layer to bring it to the top. This will allow you to visually see the new paste shape and the original shape. For those who like keyboard shortcuts, you can turn on the View Overlay mode by pressing Ctrl T on your keyboard. If you need to make any changes to any of the paste shapes, go to the Stencil Footprint Shape Library dialog box. You can use the menus or the Stencil Toolbar button to access the library, or you can right-click on the part in question and choose the Open Footprint Shape Library from the list of options. Make any necessary changes and then rerun the stencil generation. Once the footprint identification and stencil generation are complete, save the VCAM file. Note that when you save the VCAM file, the shape set and the footprint library are saved in the file as well. If you do not save the footprint library.fpl or shape set.shp files separately, you can always go back and open the VCAM design file and save these files from within the footprint shape library dialog box. This completes the Identify Footprints by selecting the footprint and generating a solder paste stencil in Weiss Software's VisualCam Stencil Design Series.